So good morning. How are you all today? I've got a really exciting case um, for us to uh, present today. Um, th this 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 case has got a lot of challenges. Okay, it's a reroute treatment. It is um, two canals joining into one in the apical third, um, and then we've got a, a kind of a tight S bend uh, at the end of the uh, of the route here. So. It's a, it's, a, it's a really, really interesting case. The end result is fantastic. Um, so let's get on with it. Let's have, let's, I'll present you the case now. So if we look at the, um, the periopical radiograph here, so this, this patient was an external referral, okay? So um, I take uh, referrals in-house with the practice I work at and also externally. So the patient presented with um, a pain, tends to percussion on this upper right four, okay? And, um, you know, as soon as I look at this, uh, this, this, this root canal, I, I, I think to myself, well, it, it, it obviously has um, two joining canals, but there is a significant amount of uh, root canal space that is remaining unfilled. And, and also when I look at this, uh, I, is, is I see that there isn't any obvious canal space. So a few challenges with this case. I want to see, um, I, well, I, I, first I want to confirm diagnosis, okay? Um, although the patient's uh, history does suggest that this tooth um, does have an acute apical periodontitis. But also what I want to do is I want to try and check uh, the sort of uh, anatomy of this tooth to help me sort of map out if I am going to redo this root canal. Um, you know, is is there any space or what's the sort of root morphology of this tooth? So when I come to shape it, it's a little bit easier. And, um, you know, we look at the, uh, the, 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 the cone beam CT scan that I've taken of this tooth here. And you can clearly see two roots and then they join into one. But there isn't any obvious uh, canal space um, apical to, to, to the obturation. And that's not to say that there isn't any canal space. Um, because, um, again, if you've watched a lot of my videos, you'll know that... Um, that, that, that sometimes the cone beam CT scan is, is, doesn't pick up really, really small uh, canals. So that's something to take into consideration. So the first thing, obviously, we're going to do is we're going to remove the old uh, uh, amalgam filling. Um, you know, uh, early on in my career, what I used to do was just make a little uh, sort of access cavity right down the middle of this tooth. And um, the problem with that, of course, is that when you come to use the apex locator, um, the, the amalgam filling sort of gives an erroneous reading. And when we uh, remove uh, this straight away, I can see that we've got some thermophil carriers here. And I suppose, um, you know, it's, 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 it's a little bit of a uh, um, sort of double-edged sword because sometimes when you've got a thermophil carrier, they're easy to remove because they're, you know, solid pieces of plastic and sometimes it can be difficult. And the, the way essentially I'm going to try and remove these thermophil carriers is, is in one um, using a H-file and the twist and pull technique. Um, one of the reasons why I don't like to use a rotary uh, in this case is that usually what happens is if you get a rotary file down there, you're going you're gonna to churn up all the GP and you're going to possibly uh, churn up the, the, the plastic carrier as well, which can be really, really difficult to, to remove. And in this case, of course, you can see that it's all removed nicely. And, and, and again, the thermophil carrier has been removed in one. And, um, you know, the, there is still a significant amount of GP remaining in this tooth. And, um, and, and again, with, with a lot of root treatments, I like to take my time. I don't like to um, just, just drag a lot of uh, rotary instruments down there. A lot of the time, I just get a DG endodontic probe, and I just like to prise uh, the GP away from the canal walls. And this sometimes dislodges it enough for me to use the H-file to screw it in and, and, uh, and, and, and put it all out. And you can see this big bit sort of uh, getting pulled out here and again just using that dg probe just to kind of dislodge um the gp don't forget when you're using instruments um, and you screw them and you're going to be pushing that gp into the walls and again lots and lots of irrigants this is really important and again again if you've seen a lot of my videos you know that i like to use a lot of ultrasonic activation 
This is great because it just removes all the little f GP fragments from the canal space. And sometimes when you directly touch the ultrasonic tip onto the GP, it sort of um, vibrates uh, the, the GP out of, uh, out of the canal. So we're gonna do lots and lots and lots of irrigants. Irrigants as well helps cool the instrument so it's less likely to break because it's under a lot of pressure, you see. And you can see now here that the um, you know, the canal spaces look relatively clean. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna try and take a working length X-ray. So I'm using a, a D finder size 10, and I'm just using a very small watch winding motion here, and I'm using my um, my uh, apex locator to see if I'm at zero reading, and I am not. So my main concern now at the moment is, um, is it because of the difficult anatomy of the sclerosal calcified canal, or is this because there's remaining GP uh, in the in the tooth that's making me not get to the apex? So I take a periapical radiograph just to see if there's any GP remaining. There's a little bit, but I would say we've got most of the GP out. So I don't think it's the, the, the reason why I can't get to length is because of the GP. It's mainly, I think, because of the uh, calcified anatomy. So to get around this, I'm gonna use a smaller diameter um, uh, D-finder. I'm gonna use your size eight with a small bend at the end and I'm just gonna very, very kind of gently watch wind in. And um, I know instantly that I've got a little bit further than I did with the size 10. And I'm just, what I'm doing here is I'm just gently watch winding, watch winding, watch winding, check and see if I'm at zero, not quite yet. Watch I watch winding, watch winding, checking I'm at zero and I get to a point where I am right at the end. So I have managed to negotiate all the way to the end of the tooth. And now what I wanna do is I'm gonna keep the hand file at length, okay? And I'm just gonna gently shape the, the, the final millimeter of, of, this, um, of this apex. I'm not gonna pull it out because it's difficult sometimes. If you pull it out, you can't get it back in again. And you'll notice here that I am going past zero. Okay, you've gotta be super careful doing this because you don't wanna um, destroy the apex, but I think with a size eight, it's not, you know, there's no risk of that. And I'm just, just shaping out, shaping out, shaping out. And then um, once I feel like the size eight is to length and it's going nicely to length, I'm gonna increase my diameter. So I'm gonna use again a size 10 uh, file here. And I'm not going through the apex in this um, situation. I am just shaping it to zero. So you just keep doing this and doing this and doing this. I'm rechecking the working length because um, to get an accurate working length, you're gonna need to use a, um, a diameter file which fits the uh, the apical diameter as much as possible so you're using a smaller diameter file that just pushes through you're not going to get an accurate uh, working length and then um, we're ready to shape and then I'm going to use these size 15 uh, high flex glide path files and at the moment what, what what's sort of happening with this is I'm, I'm getting kind of stuck at a certain level so when I'm using the, 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 the rotary, it's not getting all the way to the end. See, it's kind of getting stuck there. So it's not advancing as what, the way we'd like to. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this um, hand, uh, this rotary file into T mode. And I'm just going to wiggle it around a little bit. And you notice now that it's starting to advance. And then once I feel like I've got to a certain level, I press another button and that sort of um, has a sort of rotary motion to shape out that kind of ledge slash sort of ab abnormality in the root canal. And again, lots and lots and lots of irrigant. I'm not happy that this has gone to length nice and easy, so I'm just gonna reshape this, make sure that the canal space is nicely cleaned. So now I feel like I wanna use the size 25 high flex just to finally shape this, but as you'll notice here that I am getting stuck, um, you know, at a point it's not advancing. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna recapitulate with the size 10 D finder, make sure that I am getting to length. There's no obvious ledge there. Give it a good sort of in and out, in and out. And then I'm gonna use a smaller diameter file. I'm using a size 20 here, and that does just manage to reach past. Sometimes, you know, if you're using a master, master apical file and it's not getting all the way to length, it might be a good idea just to drop down to a lower diameter hand file just to, just to push this through. And you'll notice now with the size 25 high flex, Again, I'm using it in T mode. I'm just gonna use it as just such a gentle watch winding, watch winding, watch winding. Once I know that I've got past that certain point, um, I'm gonna turn on the rotary and that's gonna shape it out all the way. So that's the first um, canal that's been shaped. That's the, the buccal canal. Um, at, we know for a fact now that the, uh, that the palatal joins onto the, onto the buckle. And um, you've got to ask yourself, um, you know, at what point 
does does it join okay so this is significant um so the way to the way to check uh, the length of wh which it joins is you get a gp point okay and you fit this uh, gp point into the uh, into the buccal canal so this is the one that we have shaped completely make sure that sort of fits nicely to length and it doesn't it doesn't shift it nicely to length. So what I always do is I always like to concentrate on one canal. Okay, what I don't want to do is I don't want to flip between two canals. Um, the, 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 the problem with that is um, sometimes it's really difficult to get wrap your head around um, where you are with each canal. So, you know, I, I, I was ready to check the palatal to see the confluence there. But um, what I realized is that the, uh, the GP point wasn't fit into length. So we know that it hasn't been shaped accurately. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to reshape. So I'm going gonna, gonna, gonna to re-irrigate the, uh, the buccal canal and I'm going to um, get my master apical file and uh, fit it to the, to, the, to the working length. And I'm going to make sure it's shaped. So, you know, it's, it's, it's dead simple. Just, just, just take your time, make sure it's shaped. Bit of recapitulation with this size 10 D finder. Um, lots and lots of irrigation and then when we recheck the GP point it goes uh, successfully to length okay so we know that that tooth's boxed off and it's sorted so to go back to my later point um, what we want to do now is 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 we want to shape and clean the palatal canal but we know the palatal canal uh, joins with the buccal canal and you want to ask yourself at what length does this uh, does this join so we could use uh, the cone beam CT scan. You could use the measurer on that. Um, and, you know, some people say that it is quite an accurate measurement. And I suppose it is an accurate measurement. But um, what, what's difficult on the cone beam CT scan is the sort of reference point. So um, the, the, the best way to check a join and at what point it joins is to, is to check it intraorally. And the reason why you don't want to get a zero reading on the palatal canal is because essentially we, we already know the apical third of this uh, tooth has been shaped through the buccal canal. And what you don't want to do is you don't want to get your hand files and you don't want to get your rotu files to go around that joint because there is, a, of course, a risk of fracture. So again, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to get a GP point. So I'm going to fit it in the canal that has been shaped, which is the buccal canal. And then I am going to get a size 10 uh, file and I am going to just gently push it into the palatal canal it can still, until I can feel this kind of sort of spongy feeling. And I'm going to mark uh, the GP point. I'm going to fit the rubber stopper on the hand file and then I'm just going to inspect uh, the GP point. And you can see here that there is a mark right at the end that's been created by this, uh, by this D finder. So we, uh, we obviously measure the D-finder, and when we measure it, we can see that it's at 17 millimeters. So we're gonna shape the canal with the hand files and the rotary files to about 16.5, 17 millimeters. What you wanna do now is you wanna get your master apical file, and then you're gonna shape it to around 16.5 to 17 millimeters. And this serves uh, two purposes. One, of course, is that um, obviously you're putting less stresses on the files, but also it quickens the, the appointment up, which is obviously arguably another really good point for the patient and you. So now we know that both of the canals have been shaped. We're now gonna do the comfort radiograph. So we're gonna fit the GP point in the in the in the buccal canal. That's gonna go all the way to zero. We're gonna and we're gonna snip that off. Okay, so that helps a really nice reference point for when we're obturating. And then we're gonna fit the palatal at 17 millimeters. And again, I'm gonna fit that nicely. I'm not gonna push it down too far because I I know for the fact that well, well that's where it joins, and sometimes it can kind of concertina the end of the GP point. And we snip it off and we take a comfort radiograph, and it looks. Um, beautiful it looks absolutely gorgeous and um, you know it's to length it's not quite all the way to the radiographic apex but again that's not major that's not the end of the world um, and essentially what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna remove the GP points I am gonna disinfect those GP points and then I'm going to finish off my disinfection protocol which is using sodium hypochlorite activated um, 17% EDTA activated and then a final rinse of sodium hypochlorite activated and now we're ready to um, we're ready to obturate this this canal 
So I'm going to use one fill, and you can see here I'm going to use these kind of visco tips that deliver the one fill nice and easy to the canal space. And as I place the one fill, this biceramic sealer, you notice that both of these uh, canals fill. So that's an obvious visual cue that these two canals are joining. And we're going to just very, very gently push uh, the GP length uh, all the way. Um, venting the sealer is not so much of an issue here because we've obviously got that extra canal. And in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to fit both GP points at the same time. Sometimes what I like to do is fit the GP point, one of the GP points, burn it off, push it down, and then fit the other one. For some reason in this case, I just felt like I wanted to just fit them both. I think it was probably just easier to do both at the same time. And on that, I'm going to use a heated plugger just to burn off the excess. And then what I am going to do is I am going to uh, use uh, these Mach 2 pluggers just to push down nice and firmly, get all that sort of GP pushed into the canal space and, um, and, and get all the sealer onto all these little nooks and crannies and things, okay. And um, if we look at the, uh, the radiograph, um, this is, um, you know, this was done last Friday and um, it just looks gorgeous. I mean, you know, you, 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 you talk about the thrill of the fill. Um, this is, this certainly is, um, a, a, you know, a real thrill. We've got, um, we've got this obvious kind of, um, uh, this join, you know, you, you, you feel like the, 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 the anatomy of the tooth has all been filled up and then you've got this kind of beautiful kind of S shape um, right at the end of the canal here, where um, obviously the, uh, the 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 seal has just just sort of uh, got into all the all the sort of um, um, apical anatomy. So a really really nice result, beautiful result. You know, he shaves this to the patient, and they're kind of like, oh yeah, nice one. But but as as root canal dentist, as general dentist, you know that this is a super nice result. And of course, as well, you know, sending this back to the referral dentist, you're you really really proud of your work. You're really really happy. Um, so overall, super, super nice result. And as you can see here, I'm just placing the, the final core, this GP, under rubber dam. People will be happy to know here that I haven't taken the rubber dam off to do this. And um, that's it. So thanks for watching. As ever, every Friday we drop one of these videos. Um, and, and as ever, if you have any comments, suggestions or criticisms, you feel like something could have been done differently or better, please comment in the section below this video. I answer all of your questions best we can. We've also got a membership program. A membership program, um, it comes in, in two tiers. Uh, the first tier is obviously you get to support the channel and you get early access to uh, content. So I'm usually running about three weeks ahead when I drop these videos and you can watch them three weeks early. And um, the, the higher tier is that if you comment in the section below, I will personally reply to you with a video short, um, your question that you've asked. So overall, you know, I, I, I couldn't be happy with this case. It was just, just a beautiful case from start to finish. Lots of challenges and they were all overcome. And that's what we come to work for, don't we? So I will see you uh, next Friday and have a lovely day. Bye-bye.